Hey guys, it's your boy, Uncle P. Oh, it's been a minute since I've actually recorded in the car. Uh, my friend, she just left the house. <laughs> um, just let me close my windows, it's hot, but I need to, you guys to hear me out. So, ladies and gentlemen, what are we talking about? You know, I was talking to this other guy earlier on, uh, actually yesterday. Um, he says to me, oh, dude, you know what, I envy you. You're very lucky, you're very blessed and lucky to have the life that you have. And he wanted to continue talking about and i stopped him and i said whoa hold on buddy i'm not lucky uh blessed depends on what you mean by blessed but the reality is i work extremely hard for the life that i have there's literally no luck that has to do with this you know some people just don't know how to drive <laughs> there's absolutely no luck unto this i work really hard every single day every single week um and my job or my hustle doesn't only involve uh, me selling my clothes, my brand, or shooting these videos that I do, uh, doing my podcast and everything else. It involves a whole lot of things. You know, I gotta be out of the house for many hours. Uh, keeping my body in shape is part of my hustle, um, not necessarily just for the fighting. Um, there's a lot that goes into it and I started explaining to him you see the one thing that people don't understand is when people see hustlers and they get inspired they don't understand that there's a lot that goes into it you know being a hustler is not a 95 it's a 24 hour job guys and a lot of people want to go out there and claim to be hustlers and and all that guys there's nothing fun about being a hustler <laughs> you know when you when you make it yeah you know you can go around speaking motivational shit and all that but there's absolutely nothing fun what do i mean by that you know there is a time as a hustler you will find yourself selling your product and nobody's buying you know and the worst part about that is that people aren't not buying oh, let me, guys let me park on my pp garage i'm actually meeting with a client here so the reason why people aren't buying your product isn't because your product isn't good anymore the quality is still good the material is still good uh the new designs are fresh but it's the life that your hustle has now given you guys i'm really hot sorry it's the life that your hustle has now given you see what happens is people become jealous and envious as you start succeeding so it's extremely important for you the hustler to be very humble and very cautious in how you behave and how you act when you're around people who could be potential clients everyone is a potential client anybody who can buy even one t-shirt one pair of socks is a client and respect is extremely important they also there's a thin line between showing people respect and allowing them not to take advantage of you which is what happens to a lot of us uh hustlers you know you show your clients a lot of respect and all that then people start thinking that you are desperate for their business partially but partially also no um and that becomes a very big problem because your personality and your character is attached to your brand and your product to your brand and your product so what happens is how you carry yourself and how you act becomes extremely important so when you're a hustler you literally become the person you are is extremely important so guys um <laughs> do i i always advise people you know I, it's good to always have a side hustle and all that but guys if you can get a job um get yourself a stable income do it if you can open up a business that uh, can bring you a stable income do it um don't think leaving your job or going out there and doing something um that you know you feel that will make you money because when you fail you'll find yourself in a position where you become extremely bitter i'm gonna play a video for you guys i just remembered i've got this video of this guy so basically the story here this guy got into property and while he still kept his job cleaning toilets and all that it is only when somebody asked him how much are you worth that the guy actually went and assessed and checked and realized oh snap i'm actually a millionaire he was a millionaire living in his mother's house 
while still doing his nine to five job cleaning toilets and whatever it is what the, that he was doing i'll put the video at the end uh, at the end of this so you guys can see what i'm talking about guys in life you need to be smart about what you do it's not all about image you know some of us want to live alone so people can see that you you live alone some of us want to uh, have expensive cars so people see that you drive an expensive car guys everything must be done in time as a hustler there's a time where you're going to hit the roadblock and you might need to sell your car you know you might need to sell the iphone and start using a normal phone uh, a cheaper phone you might need to sell that big ass tv and go to a smaller tv if that's not your mindset as a hustler you'll never make it so before you reach the stage of having to sell your things ask yourself when you're about to buy it do you need it right now and usually we don't need these things that we purchase these expensive things you know so guys look um it's sunday um what day is it? uh sunday sunday the 20 the 27th of february um so yeah man i just wanted to inspire and motivate you guys my client is here so i will check you guys on the flip side man being a hustle is great but um it's not an easy hey job. guys it's your boy uncle p look at me <laughs> on the same day i'm shooting another video oh let me open up my windows it is hot today guys oh, and me and heat you don't get along okay so guys uh pick one i just came back from this gate and um there's this lady that uh, sells sauces here at Eastgate. It's a specific type of sauces, and these sauces are amazing. And every single month I come through, I purchase them. Now, there are times where I come a bit late and she's closing up. And there are times where um, she runs out of specific sauces. Then it's like, ah, oh, damn it, and I go about my business. Uh, last month, I actually didn't buy from her. I bought from upstairs by the food court. I didn't know there was somebody else selling um but anyways it looked like it was the very same company because i asked i said hey the lady downstairs next to checkers is that the same company she's like oh yeah, yeah no we work for the same company i'm like oh, okay great i bought what i needed to buy i went about my business so today i go i go and i'm purchasing the sources and there's a lady waiting for me to finish as soon as i finish and i'm paying she says oh hey i noticed that the mayo uh is finished and she's like oh yeah that was the last one so I look at her and she doesn't say anything else and I'm waiting for her to say she doesn't say anything else I said to her oh why don't you advise it to go upstairs to the other guys upstairs are you guys not the same company she said oh no no we are the same company so I'm like why don't you advise her she's like oh um okay yeah I'll tell her now so she was like just a little she was about to start leaving and then I said sissy just hold on go upstairs there's another store like this where they're selling oh she's like oh okay thank you and she left and then I asked her I said why didn't you advise her to go upstairs she's like oh yeah although we are the same company we competitors i'm like how are you competitors it's like well depending on how we sell you know we that's how we make money but i'm like how are you guys competitors he's like well if i want to make the boss happy i must sell more than them i'm like but that doesn't make you a competitor you're trying to suck up to the boss and i and i just realized this is the one thing that we especially us black people have as an issue we make things that are not a competition turn into a competition literally this lady would have ended up not buying this source this company would have ended up losing this uh profit or this income purely because this lady decided to turn something that is not a competition into a competition you know and the friend or the colleague who's upstairs who could have also gotten just the same uh props as she did for doing well for selling well we will not get this because you are not letting clients know when you are out of stock that there's this stock upstairs guys you know what there's literally nothing wrong with helping others and helping others succeed i think we are we've become so accustomed and so used to um people who succeed being what's the word i'm looking for listen there's just no freaking use for it guys let's help each other succeed our problem is, I think, is the jealousy and the envy that if somebody else is succeeding, you don't succeed, how they're going to look down on you. Stop worrying about how people behave when they succeed. You do your part. I promise you, you play your part and you will be rewarded for that. I'm your boy, Uncle B. See you guys on the next one. What's happening, guys? Yo, what's happening, guys? Look, I got my finger on the camera. You know, sometimes when you're a hustler, you're on the road, you got a chow and uh, you need to eat properly because you don't have time to consistently stop and eat and you can't be spending money on food so one thing i love doing is supporting these businesses uh, which is food trucks 
and uh, this is what we're having look at that all that food but i paid 50 bucks for it i know in other places it's cheaper but that's not the case the case is i'm about to eat get full and I'll be able to continue with my day and hustle mm. oh, that's good yeah all right guys let me enjoy my food and uh i'll check out on the flip side all right so guys this is all my food truck cookers so my camera is a bit dark so guys to all my food truck cookers please we black man we're beginning to lose our senses and our culture there's no sauce in this food you know make it hard to eat it in the pop without sauce but and who cooks pop with bumps this pop is uh lumps you know i cook popular with lumps man but hey this thing is still going down the throat <laughs> 50 bucks. I could never eat like this in McDonald's or KFC. I actually get food. And get full. And this is one of the things that we make a mistake as hustlers. We we tend to spend a lot of money on things that we shouldn't. I mean, for 50 bucks, I'm about to eat this. I think the next time I'm going to... Okay, I'm a big guy. <laughs> so let me not lie. But for an average person... The next time they're gonna need to eat is probably dinner. So, oh, this is good. I think I need more chili. I need more chili. So, guys, just be smart about how you spend your money and how you consume your money. You know, I think we're too reckless with how we consume and spend money. So I started shooting earlier on in the morning. Um. When I was meeting up with the client, so she wants to get a T-shirt printed. I'm gonna show you guys something. I'm hoping that my life will inspire and motivate you guys. Guys, I'm eating, and you guys are messing up my drill because I want to inspire you guys. <laughs> oh, the client literally gave me one T-shirt to brand for her, and I'm about to make 150 rand for that T-shirt. So. 150 rand. What does what's 150 rand for me? 150 rand. How many 20s are in 100? Five. So that's seven 20s in 150. That basically means that's seven loaves of bread. In my house, a loaf of bread takes two days to three days. Seven loaves multiply that by three that's seven by seven fourteen that's 21 days that's almost a month of bread sorted from 150. when you start calculating your money like that you understand the value of the money that you're making what's 150 bucks for me uh i'm driving currently this car is a hyundai santa fe this is a v i don't know i thought it was gonna be written in the door but it's a big car it's a four by four if I put 150 rand in this car, I can go to the gym for three to four days. Let's go to the gym and back. The gym is not that far from the house. That's three to four days of petrol to go and come back from the gym. What's 150 rand? 150 rand, it's half of my gym member, uh, membership. You see, you need to start understanding the value of the money that you are making in order for you to understand how it benefits you and, and also to understand how to respect the money that you make. When you start looking at money as in, ah, I just made 50 bucks. You didn't just make 50 bucks. What is 50 bucks to your life? And that's how you start respecting money and you start spending it properly in your life. All right, guys. I'm hungry. I'm gonna go back to eating. My food is sitting there looking at me. Be like, come on, touch me. No more touch it. <laughs> oh, guys, God. you know you're eating a real African meal when you start sweating. Look at that. When your forehead starts sweating because the chili is slapping. Oh man, this is slapping in so many ways. Oh, hold on. Mm. I don't think I'm gonna finish the pop. I wanted rice. I don't eat pap. Um, 
but I'm hungry, so <laughs> I almost say beggars are not choosers. <laughs> um, but the next place for, to find food was gonna be way too far. So, paperis. Mm. Wow. This is going down. I need water. Cold water. Pure water. Like the Nigerian would say, pure water. Mm. Guys, this chili is so serious. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me keep on my focus. I am oozing sweat. Mm. All right to the back of my head. All right. Woo! This is a proper meal, man. When it's slapping the taste buds and it's speaking multiple tongues. I think my ancestors are happy that I'm eating pap. And I feel my spirit dance and mm. Mm. <clears throat> Woo! It's hot. Madam, madam. You have water. We are, yeah. You said your boyfriend is Nigerian. So you don't. So you don't know pure water. You don't know pure water. Hmm. Cold, cold. That's not pure water. Is it cold though? Is it like? Is it cold like pudding? My water, eh? <laughs> Guys, she's arguing me. I'm asking about pure water. She's arguing me. I'm an African man. I can't eat hot spice food like this without pure water. I will give you water, eh? Is the is the cool drink here? So I must go to the Mulungu's mall. To buy a cool drink. Yeah. It's a text. It's a text. Right? <laughs> she said. Text, we, 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 uh, give us mm -hmm. Even your food you are eating, mm. text. So I'm gonna give you the water. Please, thank you. <laughs> I guess I'm drinking no more water, guys. Uh but yeah, this meal needs pure water. Pure water. Oh guys, while I was uh I'm here. I was on Instagram. I bumped into an old celebrity friend of mine, and he looks like he opened a very amazing mm, something grill. Uh, but it's a chisan yama place. I'm gonna surprise him and go visit it. I won't even tell him. I haven't seen him in years. Uh, he, he, I don't think he even watches my content. I don't know if the content is there. His name is Oros Mampofu. But it's not cold, eh? What so my water is here, guys. But it's not cold. So mm. now you are shooting me. But this Mandela's hey. water is this is this is this uh, who's the president now? Is this still, is this Ramaphosa's water? Hey, this one is the Ramaphosa water. I'm paying the tax more, son. Eh? Even your food, pap, my cabbage, my, my spinach, and, and the salad and that meat. It, it's a tax. When I'm going to buy it, there is a tax. This is Ramaphosa's water, ne? Yeah, this one is the Ramaphosa. I've seen Ramaphosa's water come out of my tap. It's yellow. Yellow? I'm not dying today. Your food is too nice. If I die, they're gonna say your food killed me. What about my my my, my, mm -hmm. my mumu? No, your mumu is fine. Mumu, this the one thing is water. this one. This I can't drink this one. This is one is the yellow one. It's from the tap. Ooh, nice tap. Nice they tap. Are from uh, I don't know from where. From Jamestown. Uh, not Jamestown. Yeah. Where where Pretoria, is the water coming from? <laughs> So if the water is from Pretoria, it's clean now. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Guys, you see the kind of things I meet in the street now. But it's fine. I'm going to keep the water here. Let me eat my food. So if I if I die, we'll blame it on the water. You can't die. Eh? Hmm? You can't die. This is Ramaphosa's water, bro. You know Ramaphosa doesn't yeah, love us. Ramaphosa is, is, is too much. I, I like Malema. Ne? Yo. Malema eats it. Yo, that one. Mm. Hey, he's talking too much. Wait, do you like it because he's talking too much? Truth. How do you... What's the truth that he's talking? He said, guys, ne? Mm -hmm. when guys uh, in here in South Africa, mm -hmm. ne? I have a drink, but mm -hmm. I'm not working. Mm -hmm. I go to school for my hala. Mm -hmm. No. But I'm not working. I'm finished. Mm -hmm. But I'm not working. But okay. if you want to see here, ne? Mm -hmm. the most people eat uh, 
Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. Malawi, they are working. Mm -hmm. But Mara, as on okay. South let Africa, me ask you, we, let we me ask you a question. Why are you not working? Hmm? Why are you not working? We are. We need too much money. Okay, so. So if it is Zimbabwe, if they, mm. uh, I said, uh, I said, uh, <laughs> my boss, okay. We are now by the flea market. Yeah, there's a lot of Zimbabweans working. Zimbabwe, there. Zimbabwe, yeah. and Malawi. In Malawi. Mm. Why are they no. working and you not working? Because, because you want small, them to pay more. Yeah. Maybe they were. Mm. Oh, 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 one day, mm. maybe they were working for eight hundred. They are renting eight hundred mm. for one day. Me, I can't afford. Uh, I, mm. I can't allow for eight hundred okay. because of what I'm paying the rent. Mm -hmm. I'm paying uh, school fees. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm paying the debit. Okay, my question is this: The Zimbabweans are they not paying rent? They're paying rent, but they're, they're staying with uh, maybe three or four. Okay. Uh, only one room. You understand? I understand. Okay. Yeah. So you, you want to stay alone? I want to stay alone mm -hmm. with my husband or with my kids. Okay. So this is there is Zimbabwe that are staying with. So now my question is this: three. these jobs here, these so businesses, they are market. not making money to pay you four thousand, five thousand a month. Ah, uh, they are paying or maybe two thousand or one thousand. But I, I got. Mm. I, I, I can't my question out. is this: those people, mm, they are really not is. making money to pay you big salary. Mm. So you, you don't want to work there because. Uh, they are not paying well because they're not making the money to pay you well. Mm. So when they hire someone, okay, who does not mind getting the small money, how is that an issue? Because now what you are saying is they should not have employees because they cannot afford to pay the right uh, the right salary for the employees. Like me, I've got a small business. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need help. But in my small business, maybe I'm making 10000 a month. In that 10000 yeah. I've got, I've got also expenses and everything. So I decided, no, let me get somebody and pay that person 2000 in that 10000 that I'm making a month because I've got other expenses. Mm. I come to a local person in South Africa and I hire them. They say no because 2000 is too small because they've got expenses and what, what, mm. and what, what. Yeah, 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 which is understandable. Mm -hmm. Now, my question is, if that person happens to be Zimbabwean or Mozambican or whatever country yeah, huh? and they accept the 2000 if they were legal, would that be okay? Because if they're illegal, I understand. But if they're legal and they accept the job, is that okay? No. Reason? It's more money. <laughs> I can't for 800 to said, no, it's more money. Guys, I totally understand. I also I understand what she's saying. But you see, it's, it's very important to understand the fight that we are fighting when it comes to foreigners and jobs. You see, the jobs that are being attacked are jobs that don't pay much. Guys are not going to big companies, big factories and fighting for jobs. They're going to, like here in the flea market, where people have small businesses, they need one or two people to help them and they can't afford to pay them a, a lump sum. And those are the jobs that are being affected by these uh, acts. But anyways, guys, um, it's, 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 a, it's a broader topic, something that I really want to get into. But somehow it always comes up when you talk to people in the street. Uh, but she has a business of her own. You know, she's running a food truck. And when before I bought the food, she was telling me that she hadn't even sold the plate today because people are complaining that they don't want to eat pap. Like, I'm going to get, get my meat. People are complaining that they want, they, don't, they want rice and she doesn't have rice. And they don't want to eat pap because they're going to get tired. They still have a whole day to go. That's why they don't want to eat pap. I also say the same thing. I didn't want pap because I was worried I was going to get tired as my day went. So she doesn't have rice, so she's losing business. If a Zimbabwean person comes and opens this food truck and starts uh, making rice, it's going to be an issue. Sometimes you need to supply what your customer base is looking for in order to be profitable and successful. <laughs> like, guys, I don't do screen printing. Because I don't think the quality is good, I don't like it. But I get clients that want screen printing. So what do I do? I got a friend that owns a company that does screen printing. We had an agreement. It gives me much cheaper prices. So I do screen printing. So I advertise that I do screen printing and I do it through him. I just make sure that it makes it does the job properly. Because it's my name that's attached to the quality of the work. Although he's the one who's doing it. Alright guys. I'm done with my food. Oh, I'm full. Uh, I don't eat oil, uh, food cooked out of fish oil because of my refluxes. 
I'm kind of feeling I'm I'm feeling my reflex is kicking in. Sorry guys, let me move my car so you guys can see me properly when I <coughs> but I'm done. So I'm driving away now. I wanna make you guys laugh. So remember I was complaining earlier on when I was eating that the lady didn't put sauce, she should have put sauce. Guys, if you were watching the video from the beginning, I bought sauces at Eastgate earlier on. I could have used the sauces I bought from Eastgate. But the food was delicious. But uh I'm feeling my reflux is trying to kick it. Oh, that's a big pothole. So I'm gonna look for somebody. There should be somebody here in the street selling uh, Coke. Somebody selling Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola helps me that gas helps with the reflux. So let me let me try and see what I can do. Uh, get me get me Coke, and then I'm good. And then oh yeah, the wife asked me to do something for her. And then yeah, once we get what the wife asked, we, unfortunately we didn't find what we were looking for initially. So. We'll try and get what the wife asked us for and then we're gonna get out of here. Sweet! Alright, let's focus on our driving. Arrived at K90. I'm at K90 more more. Oh, Meat World is actually here. I needed to get meat, so I'm gonna get meat here at K90. Let me give this guy space to go on the other side. There we go. Okay, let's park right here. Alright. All right, guys, so we are at K90 more. I'm going to go to a shop called Mr. Panda, which is, I think, of my, somewhere there. I don't know if you guys can see it. And I also needed to go to Meat World and get some stuff for the house. So we can do that also. Just close my windows. Looks like it's in the rain. And yeah, we got everything we need. Cool. Oh, guys. Um. So, yeah, man, I'm full. And, and my reflexes are kicking because of the meat a lot of oil and uh, it wasn't warmed properly i knew when i was about to eat it that that might happen but i haven't had that the heavy refluxes in a long time but anyways it is what it is um all right let me go do what i'm about to do and i'll see you guys just now Well, in the center, and uh, let's look for what we're looking for. I came here for specific things, but I end up probably grabbing a couple of things for my son. I love grabbing that boy things. <laughs> so, guys, one of the things that I've been looking for, you guys won't believe, I found them all on a set. Chinese noodles. I've been looking for a whole lot of different flavors of Chinese noodles, and I just walked into a Chinese noodle haven. Just a whole bunch of Chinese noodles. Look at that. Oh, and I love me some noodles. Let's go crazy. Super excited. Ooh, let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. Okay. Oh, you can't even read. It's not translated in English. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. Cool. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, guys. Uh, one thing about me doesn't really matter how much I want something, especially when it comes to food. If I think the price is ridiculous, I'm not gonna buy it. I mean, normal noodles, I buy what? Pack of five, which is five inside, so that is five by five, 25 noodles. I literally buy 25 noodles for a hundred bucks. And I can make those noodles at home, so no worries. Alright guys, we are done in the East Rand, K19 more. I haven't been here in forever. This is like the first time I've been here this year. I don't even think I was here the whole of last year. I was in this side. So I've bought some meat. Guys, I only buy my meat from Meat World. They've got the freshest meat ever. Look, I know food lovers and all those places also have fresh meat. Price-wise. I don't really know because I've never compared prices, but I just love and I love food lovers because I love um, Meat World because they speak Portuguese. It's a Portuguese butchery and When I walk in there, I get to speak Portuguese So that's quite fun <laughs> uh, I love I love going there because then I, I just speak Portuguese with the people It's it's, it's quite a lot of fun. It's three o'clock. So everything is closing. I forgot it's Sunday um, So the mall is closed. I'm gonna be shooting back home now uh, I'm not forgetting anything, right? 
I got the SIM card. I didn't get the vinyl because they didn't have. So I'll have to go get that tomorrow. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna go home now, be with the family. It's Sunday. I usually don't want to be out on a Sunday, but yeah, I had to. I heard to when the hustle calls, the hustle calls. But guys, like I keep saying, and I keep uh, like the whole purpose of this video, uh, well, I wasn't really planning on shooting my whole day. I just wanted to show you guys that when you hustle, you need to be smart about how you're doing things, where you're going, how much money you're spending, how much petrol you're spending. And I think a lot of us, we, we get caught in the hustle that you don't even see the profit you know you make 150 bucks you end up chowing the money <laughs> you know you end up doing this doing that now you gotta put petrol before you know it you don't even see the profits it's extremely important to see the money that you make um i have spent today i spent a thousand eight hundred rands uh I made 150 from one client and another client, uh, three clients ordered shorts. Um, that's what, 250, 250, so that's 750. And then uh, I've got another client that ordered a black vest, that's 200 rand. That is, uh, what, 750, that's 950. So we have made 1,100 rand today. And we have spent 1,700 of the money that we all, we, uh, well, I had made from a deal that I made yesterday. So yesterday I went to go do some business and I made 1,700 bucks. Out of that 1,700 bucks I spent, yeah, I spent almost 800 bucks and I made 1,100 today. So I'm sitting on a profit. <laughs> the car has got fuel, uh, enough fuel for the rest of the week. Um, I've got 10 gig data on my phone enough data for me to be able to communicate when I'm out of the house and not connected to the Wi-Fi uh, tomorrow is the first so uh, deposits transfer I'm gonna probably no tomorrow is the 28th so tomorrow Monday is the day I go I hustle more and then I start putting money into bank account so that David orders uh, when they kick in on the first the 28th is tricky uh, February is tricky because it ends on the 28th and uh, those couple of days that is missing in February makes it very tricky for hustlers because we depend on days in order for us to be able to pay certain uh, accounts but with that said uh, tomorrow I've got a couple more meetings a couple more people to meet up hopefully make money and uh, yeah man put uh, put them into the bank accounts for David orders like my gym uh, my internet at the house and then obviously from the first, second, third, now you know you I gotta buy electricity for the house. Um, I gotta put gas. Um, I use gas, so my stove is gas, my keys is gas. So I gotta put gas and then obviously do the house groceries. Being a man is not easy. Being a father is not easy, guys. Uh, my household, I need at least 15 to 20,000 every month in order for my family to be well off to be okay so right now because everything's closed i know checkers closes at five today i'm quickly rushing to primrose to go to another meeting uh and then when that meeting is done i'm gonna rush to checkers because i need to buy nappies for theophilus <laughs> and then yeah and then i'm gonna be home yep all right guys i'll see you just now it's about to start raining heavy. It's sunny and it's hot and the rain is coming. Uh, we are on the primrose side. Uh. So if I was going home, I would be turning left right now and I'll be home, but I'm not going home. I'm going to a meeting on the other side of Primrose. Ah. Okay, lightning is coming. I don't think I left anything outside by the house, so I don't have to worry. Um, but yeah, the lightning is coming. We're on the Primrose side of the world. South Africa is beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful country, guys. Oh, look at the sky guys it's a freaking beautiful day now we are in primrose side yeah we have a meeting this side of the neighborhood 
uh, which you don't want to go. Let me turn you. Hey, we are on the Primrose side, guys. It's, uh, today is Sunday, so everybody's usually in the house because this road is usually busy. There's a lot of cars, a lot of people. All these shops are usually busy, open, and everything, but Sunday. People stay home, mind their own business, stay away from trouble, which is good. I need to change my windscreen. My windscreen's got a crack. Do you know how much it's gonna cost me to change this? Sheesh. But anyways. Oh, somebody bought this. Guys, that what you're looking at right now, I wanted to buy it a couple of years ago to open up a club, but the owner decided to play me around, so. Okay guys, because of time, I've just decided to stop at the spa in Primrose. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna buy the things that I'm missing here rather than go all the way to the other side of the world. So, okay. Okay guys, so we are at spa. What do we need? We need nappies. We need nappies. So guys, I got noodles on special, you see, I went to the Chinese mall, the price I bought this, I would have bought one, this is the Kellogg's noodles, I got that for, it is 40 inside, for, for $3.99 each. Okay, guys, this is why you need to be careful when you have kids. Look at the price of nappies. Look at that. That's 204 Rand for 76 nappies. My son will probably finish that <laughs> if not in two weeks or one week. Anyways, let's go. Guys, it's already late. What time is it? It's 10 p.m. I'm already at home. I've done a lot of things. Theo is sleeping. We're having dinner. This is how you eat at home compared to what I ate outside. Can you see that? I got beef stew. Oh, you don't want to know. Dried meat, chips, rice. I've been having right now. So this is that's how, that's how my Sunday went, and this is how my Sunday is ending. I'll see you guys on the flop one. I'm gonna edit the video as soon as I'm done eating dinner. And try to upload it before midnight. Oh my god, this food is good. Oh god. I got robbed by one of these new feminine ass gangs. We had to go in like this and shit. Give me all that shit. Take your shirt off. I was like, what? Whoa. <laughs> That's my real life. Then you get home and she takes that shit off. So shit, what's up? Uh... <laughs> I mean, did you take your afro off? 